Welcome back to the Shine and Thrive Photography Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Monica. All right. Well, that's enough of that. Got that out of my system. So today I'm excited to dive into this episode because we shall talk about money and more specifically, a sign that it's time to raise your prices like right now, stat, tonight, right now, today. Okay. Um, I'm so passionate about this topic. And if you're a wedding or portrait photographer, it's that time of year when you're now thinking of the following upcoming season and trying to get it fully booked, right? Or maybe you're already like, oh, it's fully booked. Yay. My, I don't have to book anything else, right? Then especially you will need to listen to this episode if you are already pretty much booked out. And for this episode, I'm pulling a clip from one of my outsourcing made easy support calls with my students where one of my OMI students said that she had 38 sessions and weddings in her editing queue this past November in 2021. Again, wrap your head around that. All all the students on the call were in shock. They're like 38. So she had, I think she had maybe five weddings and the rest were sessions and they were all in her editing queue. She felt so overwhelmed. And when I heard this, when I heard her tell us this, my heart freaking broke for two reasons. Number one, that she was overwhelmed and burnt out. I couldn't even imagine how she was feeling, but also because I know she could have easily made that same amount of money by raising her rates and shooting one third or even half of those sessions. And right away in that moment, I knew I wanted to remind you here on the podcast to not let this happen to you this upcoming season and to start raising your rates slowly right now, literally tonight, okay? This episode pertains to those who felt overbooked last season, and if you are already almost or fully booked for 2022 or 2023, as it stands right, like right now I'm recording this January 6th, 2022, so just to give you like a timeline of what I mean, um, and just FYI, to give you a straight up open example, because I love being open about my business so that you know uh, you have actual tangible examples of like how to operate yours and inspiration and know it's possible for you. Just so you know, for 2023 so far, and it's January 2021 right now, I, oh my God, <laughs> I screwed that up. It's January 2022 right now, still getting used to saying that. So for the 2023 wedding season, I only have four wedding bookings right now, okay? And that means for me, with my goals, with how many weddings I want, how much I charge, that means I'm right on track. So if you have more than that, if you have, you know, eight weddings booked, 10 weddings booked for 2023, oh man, you need to raise your rates stat again tonight, okay? So yeah, I want you to tune into this episode Listen to the advice that I give to my OMI students about how to raise their rates in a way that is kind of slow and gradual and makes them feel really good during the process instead of all fearful and terrified, right? Because you're not going to book any book any wedding or session bookings from a place of fear and not being confident in yourself and what you have to offer. So I make sure that I teach you how to do it in a way that has you feeling really good throughout the process. And then once you hear the clip from the support session that I had with them, um, at the end of the episode, I will also be sharing another Shine and Thrive podcast episode I recorded way back when that is a very, very powerful episode for you to listen to that will take you more step by step on how to raise your rates so that you make sure that you do it in a way that is perfect for your goal of how many sessions or weddings that you want. Okay, so In addition to listening to this episode, I really, really want you to be in action and listen to the episode I suggest at the end of this episode. And it comes with a free downloadable worksheet that will take you step by step. And so many of my listeners have had incredible results saying that they're booking at higher rates right away, all of that. And I want the same for you because I want you to make the income you deserve in your photography business so you can have more lifestyle freedom in your life, more financial freedom. Um, and you know, everything that comes along with it. So yeah, enjoy tuning into this episode. When I first started my wedding photography business back in 2011, I made just $5,000 in my business. 
Now I bring in multiple six figures per year while working only 30 hour weeks serving my dream couples. I'm here to help you discover that it's so possible to have what you want, when you want in your business so that you can create the life you've always dreamed of and deserve. So another thing I want to talk to you guys about is opportunity cost. So I don't think Tia's here today. No, Tia, she might watch the replay later, but I don't know uh, how many of you remember last week, Tia, maybe you can raise your hand. She, we, 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 she had a question and I'm like, okay, wait, how, what's your queue like? Like how many sessions do you have to edit? And she's like, well, okay, let me see. Okay. If se- I don't even know how many sessions weddings, but in total it's about, and I think all of us were like, what? So Tia is one of the OMI students and she literally says she has 38 sessions and weddings to edit in there. There's a mix of mini sessions, like full length sessions and some, I think four weddings or so. Um, and so right away in that instant, I'm like, okay, there is a problem here where number one, she got herself to this point because, and I want to share this with you guys in case you feel like you're super booked up, right? If you're super booked up like that and not even like that, you can even be just a little bit more booked up than you want to, right? With how much you're shooting. That means you're charging too little. You are undercharging. And what I want you to understand is that for every opportunity that comes along, for every inquiry, for every session, every opportunity cost, because for everything you say yes to, that means you're saying no to something else. Now, with outsourcing, right? Of course, this is going to open up so much more time, right? So you will have that time to take on more sessions and bookings and all of that. But I want you to also keep in mind that throughout this process, I want you to also consistently raise your prices because as you keep getting more inquiries, more inquiries, that means the demand for you is growing and it's always going to be growing year over year, like month over month. And the trick that I like to do is every two to three bookings, raise your prices by a little bit. So for example, for weddings for me, what I did was, I mean, let me see, how much was I charging? I think back like five years ago, I think I was charging maybe around 2,500 or 3,000 per wedding. And now I'm charging 7,000. And the way that I got there was through literally what I'm telling you right now. And it's so easy. Every two to three bookings, for example, let's stick with weddings first, just raise your rates for all of your collections by $200, maybe by $300. And then the next three bookings you get be like, okay, it's time to raise my prices again and just play with it intuitively. There's no right or wrong number. If you want to raise it by hundred dollars at once do that. But I like to stick within the 200, $300 range because you'll sometimes get really (laughs) awesomely surprised where you're like, Oh my God, someone booked me for this price. That, it's make, that price got me so uncomfortable, so scared. But then you get someone to say yes, and then you feel all confident. And then when you send out that new pricing that's higher, but you've already booked someone at it, but at that price, that confidence shines through and it helps you book more weddings at that price. And then you're like, okay, well now I feel like comfortable at this price. So let me raise it again by $200. And then you're a little uncomfortable again. The key is to always stay uncomfortable within your pricing because that is exactly where you will grow and where you will be able to charge more. And remember, the ball is always in your court. You can always lower it down. And this is why I keep my prices private behind the scenes. Like I have an average investment on my website, but um, my pricing outside of that is always fluctuating pretty much like like flight prices even. So for example, during the pandemic, right? When there was much less demand, I really, really lowered my prices to the point where I was back charging maybe $4,500 per wedding. And that was okay because it was just a different season, right? And I just, I was flexible with how everything was, um, with everything that was happening. No one was booking my $7,000 package. So I'm like, okay, that's okay. Let me just be flexible. And then now I'm back up to that price again for 2022 and 2023 bookings. So just stay flexible with that, play with the numbers and 
the ball is always in your court. If you have raised your rates so much and you get a dream wedding and they're like, oh, sorry, our budget is within this. If it's like a Friday or Sunday wedding and you feel good about it and you want it, just express to them that, you know what, for all these reasons, I'm, I'm happy to gift you this much off the collection. And you can always just book that wedding at a lower cost anyway. So I really, really want to encourage you all to keep raising your prices based on supply on demand, how many people are inquiring so you can get paid what you're, what you're worth. Right. And you never want to be <clears throat> put in the position where you are just so overwhelmed and so overbooked with the actual amount of bookings and, and shoots, right? Like Tia was like Tia could have doubled her prices, shot half the amount and she was still been burnt out. Right. But she would have at least been half the amount of burnt out, made the same amount of money, so always, always think that way. All right. So now that you tuned into that clip from one of my OMI support calls, I want you to go back down into the archive of the Shine and Thrive Photography Podcast and play episode number five. And it's titled The Easiest Way to Make More Money as a Wedding Photographer. But even if you're just a portrait photographer and you don't photograph any weddings, you can still take the concept that I teach in there and follow the worksheet in your own way to make sure you still benefit from it. So please make sure to go tune into it. It's about a half an hour episode and that half an hour that you put into it along with doing the work and doing the worksheet can mean the difference between you making thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars more this year or not. So that's your 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 decision to make, right? Which path do you choose? Do you choose the path of just uh, listening and learning and not doing anything about it? Or do you choose the path of listening, learning, and then actually implementing and taking action? The choice is yours, but I know which way I'm voting for you. So I am here just cheering you on because I want you to make the most money possible in your business because you deserve it. And so yeah, go do that. Go listen to episode number five right now. Attention fellow wedding photographers and fellow wannabe wedding photographers. Tell me if this sounds like you. You're scared of missing key moments on wedding days. You feel pressured to create photos that are quote unquote Pinterest perfect and Instagram worthy. You're nervous about all the different lighting scenarios that are out of your control and you're not sure how to handle them. You're confused on how to balance creating beautiful imagery while also capturing authentic moments and emotion. And you're worried about being in people's way way too often. If you're like, hells yeah, Sarah, you read my mind, then I'm here all excited and bushy tailed. Yes, I had to throw in the squirrel reference to let you know that I've created something for you that will help you become a confident wedding day storyteller in just two weeks. It's an online program that I created just for you called Intuitive Storytelling, and it's officially out and ready for enrollment. I want you to take a moment and imagine for a second what life would be like if you knew how to be at the right place at the right time on wedding days so you can catch those key and in-between moments. You got emails back from your clients saying, you were the best freaking decision we made for our wedding. You also knew how to confidently create strong storytelling photos that people felt emotionally connected to. And you finally felt like an actual fly on the wall, aka people don't stare into your camera all day anymore. Well, it's all possible because I consistently experience these things myself. And now I want to help you make these possibilities become your reality. Are you all bright eyed and bushy tailed right now too? Again, had to throw in the squirrel reference, you know me. So listen up. You can get started on learning all my tips and tricks of how I document wedding days as soon as today. You can go to sarahmonica.com forward slash storytelling for all the deets and instructions on how to grab your copy of the course. You'll have lifetime access and you can go at it at your own pace along with a private community of other like-minded photographers that are on the same journey as you are. With intuitive storytelling, you'll be able to learn how to confidently storytell like a pro on wedding days in just two weeks. So what are you waiting for? 
Uplevel your storytelling game this wedding season so that next year you'll be watching your inbox filling up with even more inquiries. Hello referrals from this year's clients. So again, head over to sarahmonica.com forward slash storytelling and sign up now. I cannot wait to see you in there. Yay! Thank you so much for hanging out with me and tuning into this episode. If you got value out of it, please feel free to message me on Instagram at Sarah Monica Photo. That's Sarah No H, Monica with a K, photo, to let me know. I get so freaking energized hearing from others that what I've said has had a positive impact on their lives. Also, make sure to hit subscribe to the Shine and Thrive podcast to never miss an episode. I'm so grateful for you and I'm sending you all the productive vibes your way so you have the best week ever.